why are we choosing to have fewer children, even when our own ethnic group disappears? And I do believe it is partially caused by selfishness. I do. Uh, if I'm offensive, I apologize. I'm sorry. But I, I do believe that. And I think if we want to be honest about it, a lot of people always say to me, you know, I could never have kids these days. I'm selfish. I'm selfish. I'm a very selfish person. I, I'm the youngest of five kids. My parents divorced when I was eight. I was very scarred by my parents' divorce. And what my parents did to help me through it was spoil me. I got what I wanted. I am selfish till today. Ask my wife, ask my kids. Unfortunately, I have a naturally selfish dis disposition. But I'm not going to let that selfishness deny me the greatest pleasures and the greatest joys of life. And having kids is fantastic. I love it. So does the quantity, not about you specifically, but just in general, you, you say parents don't appreciate kids the way parents once did, and you talk about the quantity of children that parents would have. Does that directly translate into how parents feel about kids? Another very good question. No. I think in the Jewish community it's different for two reasons. Number one, our religion believes in, in, in a lot of kids. And number two, in other words, we see children as a, as a treasure. And number two, so many Jews died in the Holocaust. That's what this museum is, you know, has a... First time I came to this outstanding museum, it was this incredible Holocaust exhibit. Six million Jews died, and we have to replenish Jewish numbers. You know, whenever I tell my non-Jewish friends, I'm sorry, whenever I ask them, how many Jews are there in the world? They'll say, oh, uh, not a lot. Not more than 200 million, I don't think. When I say to them, actually, there's about 14 million, they're in shock. We, in the, in the Jews in America, we had 6 million up until about 10, 15 years ago. Now we have 5 million. As all of us living in the States, the Jewish community was shocked to discover. We've lost a million through a low birth rate, through a marriage, but especially because of a low birth rate. Uh, don't believe me? Travel to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, and you will find 200 trillion single Jews who date and date and date and just never marry. I mean, they're almost love anorexics. It's remarkable, and someone has to do something about it. No, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that quantity is everything. Quantity plays a bit of a role, but of course it's not everything. You can have a single, you can be, have one child to be the greatest parent. I am saying, however, that if people choose not to have more children because they can't afford it, and yet they're still taking vacations and buying new cars, then you have to look at what their priorities are. That's what I'm saying. There are couples who probably genuinely feel they can't afford it. My wife and I have never made that kind of calculation. We've had kids whether or not we believe we could afford it, because honestly I believe that necessity is the mother of invention. I'll have another child, I'll have to work harder, I'll have to be more inventive, I'll have to cut out more TV, I'll have to just, because I have a child, I have to feed. And that's the way it's been for us. We've never been rich, but we've gotten by, thank God, because I worked my guts out, because I'm not going to let my kids go hungry. And you know, I thank God for his blessings that that hasn't happened. But there are probably families who genuinely uh, feel they can't afford it, or who can't afford it, that's why they have fewer children. But I'm talking about the affluent among us, who can easily afford to have more kids, and we have one. Why is it that I'm criticized for having eight children, as if I'm overpopulating the earth, and yet Jay Leno can have 40 cars, and people will always, they'll write in TV Guide about his incredible car collection. Why is having a car more valuable than having a child? For me, it just isn't. And it's not that I'm not more, I'm, I'm less materialistic than he is. I'm naturally just as much as he is. But here's my, where my faith comes in. You know, I'm part of a religion that says that children are precious, and I really believe that, and I've seen it in my own life. Um, you said your friends who say that there are 200 million Jews in the world. Yeah. Maybe they, they go for the old Lenny Bruce bit about you know, who's Jewish, who's not Jewish. If you're born in New York and you're Jewish, you're Jewish. If you're born in New York and you're not Jewish, you're still Jewish. If you're born in Butte, Montana and you're Jewish, you're not Jewish. It's an old joke. Uh, one more thing from me and then we'll open up the question and answer. Um, you discussed, uh, obviously, uh, Judaism and in the book you discuss the study of Torah and the importance of God. Um, so my question is, in, in basically trying to talk about what goes into being a good person, in this case, a, a good man, family, to your community, uh, do you think someone who does not believe in God can be a good man? Absolutely. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that the Jewish faith says that even if we look in, in terms of salvation, and Jews don't focus on salvation, we really don't care if we're going to heaven or hell. I'm sorry to burst your bubble if you think that's like very important. <laughs> My Christian friends, and I'm very close to the Christian community, are always shocked when I say that. You know. Who cares about where we're going? It's about what we do here on earth that's precious. Clothing the naked, feeding the hungry. 
giving sight to the sightless, loving our kids, being faithful to our spouses. Uh, but even if you look in terms of Jewish discussions of salvation, which are rare, it says that people are judged entirely by their actions. Righteousness is judged by actions. An atheist who lives a righteous life, he's kind to strangers, he practices his hospitality, um, is infinitely more worthy than the person who believes in God, who doesn't do the same. In our religion, belief is almost immaterial. Yes, of course, we, we should believe in God, but it's action which, which counts. Um, this is part of the conversation that I've been having with my, I, I have, unfortunately, I'd have to say my former friend, Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is the most famous atheist in the world. He participated in many of the debates that I organized at Oxford. We, we, he and I debated. He then denied it. Anyway, it led to a whole exchange. He's changed over the past 10 years. He's been radicalized. I think with Christopher Hitchens, also a very decent guy. He's also become too radical. These guys have become secular fanatics. And I've always said to them, what do you need to hate us for? Why do you speak so disparagingly about people of faith? I mean, this is the mistake religion always made through the years. If you didn't believe in God, you were an idiot, you were immoral. Now you're making the same mistake. If you do believe in God, you're all those things. Atheists can be absolutely the most decent, dare I say it, godly people in the world, even though they don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. For me, godliness depends on action. And um, I never judge someone by, by what they believe or don't, don't believe. Um, my community is not the Jewish community. Although I am passionately Jewish and Orthodox Judaism is my defining essence. I would no sooner leave it than my life would leave my body. It's who I am. And yet my community is not the Jewish community. It's certainly not Orthodox Jews. Um, with me, it's not a cliche when I say that probably most of my close friends are not Jewish. My family and I, while living in the Jewish community, don't really revolve in our Jewish community. Our Friday night dinners are probably half non-Jewish or more. Mostly atheists. The fact is I work in the media where a lot of people are not people of faith. And um, I love them. As long as you're kind to people and you're nice to me, I'm going to be nice back. But even if you're very religious, I mean, I've been attacked viciously by religious people in my time. And uh, I love religion. I'd like to see it spread. I especially love Judaism because it's the religion with which I was raised, the religion that I've devoted my life to propagate. But the moment religion begins to think that it speaks with the authority of God himself and it can condemn people and judge people, it's just horrible. Someone called me yesterday and said to me, um... You have to write an article about gay marriage in, in California. You're an Orthodox rabbi. I've written a lot on the subject. It's funny that they called me because, you know, I guess he doesn't know me. Uh, this is a famous thing I've written a lot about. It. I have a gay Orthodox Jewish brother. He tries his best to lead a religious life. He's very charitable. He's a successful businessman. He uh, is the best brother. He's the best son to his mother. He takes my mother all over the world on cruises and trips, and I have stated many times in writing that I believe that he is closer to God than I am because of his righteous action. Now, does that, does that mean that as an Orthodox Jew I can condone uh, homosexuality? No, because I can't rewrite Judaism. I accept God's law. It does mean that there are 630 commandments in the Torah. I always say to my brother that one of them is to marry a woman and have children, and another is not to practice gay sex. So you know what? You have 611 commandments left. You know, and that'll keep you busy. And there's probably commandments that I'm transgressing on. I don't know why we have to always find something by which to condemn people. Two of my colleagues from my Open Friends radio show are here. I see you, Megan and Sarah. Thanks for coming. You know, and one of, the, one of our team on our daily show is, is, is a Jewish lawyer who's gay. Uh, he works out of Chicago. And he's the nicest, most decent guy. And that's how God will judge him. I don't believe you become religious in order to get into heaven. I want people to be more religious. I've written books on Judaism. I try to get Jews to practice Judaism, but not so that they're better than anyone else. It's rather so that you can be in a relationship with God. You know, if, you're a if I'm a man, I want to be in a relationship with my wife, then my wife has needs and I cater to them. I have needs, she caters to them, and that's a relationship. God says, the Sabbath is, is, is my day. I created the world in six days, and that's my day. So show me that I mean something to you by just honoring it. You know? Don't do mundane things. It's like your wedding anniversary. If you just treat it like any other day, you're showing your wife that day has been precious. I get that. If I want to be in a relation with God, then Shabbos is holy, so I observe it. And I try to tell the same thing to Jews and non-Jews. That has to be one day of family and friendship. But do I believe that I'm a better person than other people for observing the Shabbos? Of course not. How many hypocr religious hypocrites are there? So I keep my religion to be in a relation with God, not to claim some moral superiority to others, unless the commandments relate specifically to moral action, like do not steal, do not kill. Yeah, 
If I don't kill and someone else does, I am more moral than him. 